I'm just going to run through the, just to revive your memory uh, of, uh, and for those people who haven't seen the exhibition upstairs, um, the, the various categories. And um, the one that's up there at the moment is the one we choose for the people's choice. And um, that's a George Bourne montage. An original and that's, that's the original. George Bourne, uh, he was born in 1875 and died in 1924. Um, he was known as a photographer, a magician, a conjurer, a writer. Um, he was pioneer press photographer for the New Zealand Herald between 1902 and his death in 1924. Best known for his documentation of Rua Kenana and his settlement and temple at Mangabahatu in the Urawera, and also the Walsh Brothers Flying School uh, at Mission Bay. He was, he was very interested in aerial photography, and in fact, he was a pioneer aerial photographer in New Zealand. Um, and he was a pioneer experimenter with the montage, which we'll explore here, um, which he was a precursor of people, the avant-garde artists like Man Ray in Europe. Um, you'll see from that one that there's a combination of things there that he's, um, his, his, he's taken an aerial photograph, um, he's done close-up photography of a dragonfly, um, he's got photographs of a, a, a group of Māori girls from the Urawera, and he's combined all these separate images onto a, a composite montage. Um, and the, the end product of this sort of work was the uh, weekly news publications and um, You can see here that there's the same image superimposed on an aerial photograph taken in the Urawera. And that's uh, the photographic print of the same. So we have the photographic print, and here is the every, every Christmas between about 1908 and 1923. Um, one of his works was included in the Christmas number of the Weekly News. And um, the, the, the main uh, motivation was entertainment. Um, you get someone like Man Ray, it becomes an artistic statement and, and, and political um, intent. Um, but this was purely for entertainment in the entertain people over Christmas. And you can probably notice that the subject on the screen is the same dragonfly. Yeah. So all he's done is placed paper under an enlarger and he's simply switched out the negative from one to another after taking a picture with a masked background so that he then only exposes one part of the picture at a time. So he exposes a background and then he puts in another negative that's been done in advance, then he exposes the dragonfly, and then at one point he would have also exposed the people separately too, and then he's ended up with a composite image. Here's a similar one, um, a, a fanciful sort of aircraft, and remember when he was taking photographs of the Walsh Brothers uh, flying boats at Mission Bay, um, Aeroplanes were a novelty, and um, so he's quite concerned about aeroplanes, but here he's, um, he's created a uh, flying machine, and again, um, combined with an aerial photography of Auckland wharves. And the same thing, again, um, repeated here. Thanks, Sean. Um, the same image, but with a few adjustments and additions to it. <laughs> we 
I was talking to you about how combining his various interests like his aerial photography, here he must have uh, been able to do some telephoto or telescopic photography, a photograph of the moon and then an aeroplane superimposed on it. Here again is the, the dragonfly, but um, this uh, Glaxo was a, a sort of a milk substitute for babies. And um, here's baby Nari, his, his daughter, on, on a um, dragonfly flying over the, a dairy farm. Here again you've got um, uh, the George Bourne's children superimposed on a, a Walsh Brothers part of a Walsh Brothers flying boat and then another, that, again that same fanciful flying machine um, flying over another view of Auckland, over um, Campbell's Point actually. And you can see um, John Logan Campbell's house, Kilbride there. A, a student of photography at Elam School of Fine Art um, has done some research and um, has followed up on what we have in our collection uh, plus what is in private collections and, um, and she's also um, sourced, uh, traced all the um, images that were reproduced in the weekly news. So there's quite a substantial little um, uh, study of, of his montage work. He developed quite a rapport with the, the Tuhoi people in the Yurawira and um, he's having a tooth taken out. Dentistry in its <laughs> finest form. <laughs> they needed leverage. He does actually have a lot of humorous images and it's probably the thing that makes him quite different to a lot of photographers of the time. And it's, it's what makes him similar to Henry Winkleman, who we'll also, we'll also talk about, who also had a sense of humor. And when he wasn't doing humorous photography, he was also making what we call documentary photography, so documenting everyday life and places that he went. Uh, so he was doing good documentary work Here's a, a view inside um, the flying school workshops, um, assembling the planes. Most likely a glass plate, quarter plate camera. The smaller the better, but he would have probably preferred glass just for the detail. 